Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like to enter into the record um, three letters, uh, one from UNCF, uh, one from the American Council of Education, uh, the other from uh, Spelman College um, uh, that speak to some of the issues uh, that they're concerned about uh, regarding uh, the, uh, the services uh, that they want to continue. Uh, Mr. Secretary, it's good to see you again. Uh, thank you for coming to speak with us today uh, about the department's uh, budget. Um, and uh, I'd invite you to come back to my district again uh, sometime soon. It was a pleasure having you there uh, to visit uh, our historic JCSU and uh, Paul uh, Creek uh, Elementary. Uh, last year, we were proud to secure significant wins for minority serving institutions and historically black colleges and universities in the federal omnibus. Uh, and um, uh, several millions were, were allocated. It's a program that was originally uh, included in the Ignite HBCU Excellence Act. And so I just want to um, ask you to just uh, make a comment or two about the importance of investing uh, in R&D infrastructure programs um, at our schools. Thank you for that. And uh, without question, investing in research and development uh, at these institutions is critical for their continued growth, for their ability to have access to grants and contracts, um, and also to make up for uh, historic um, underinvestment. Um, and uh, we've seen We've seen our uh, HBCUs um, welcome and take advantage of those dollars. We see that they have a plan to engage in better facilities to make sure that their students have the same access to labs uh, that other institutions have, which would then make them more eligible for, as I said before, contracts. So we're pleased to be able to provide support for that, and we recognize the importance of doing that to level the playing field. Thank you. And you know, uh, when we look at the, uh, even though the Ignite didn't pass as Ignite, uh, there was 50 million going to um, HBCUs. That, and we, we would certainly continue to hope that there would be no competition against the HBCUs and MSIs and that HBCUs could stand uh, on their own um, and not compete with well-resourced institutions like the University of Texas or the University of California. Uh, I'm curious about whether you have uh, vetted your thinking uh, with the experts of UNCF uh, regarding this matter. Yes, we're in regular conversation with our colleagues, um, UNCF and others around the important uh, needs and the unique needs of HBCUs and we'll continue to work with them and our HBCUs to make sure that their needs are listened to and that we're acting in a way that supports their individual needs. Right, thank you. Let me, let me you were talking about the OPMs and my colleague was uh, just uh, talking about them. I just wanted to uh, mention that the online program managers uh, have seen an explosion in, in the number of contracts with school districts and institutions of higher education uh, uh, as a result of the pandemic uh, necessitating a move to digital and remote learning. Uh, UNCF and many HBCUs have expressed the importance of retaining the bundle services um, uh, exception and of course, letters have been sent to you. These are the ones that we have just uh, put into the record. Uh, so I hope that you would certainly consider, uh, continue to consider those requests. Uh, let me ask you about um, the, the Department of Education on February 15 released two announcements. The first focused on incentive compensation guidance. The second uh, sig uh, sought to significantly expand the definition and the reach of third party service or oversight. Uh, and of course, again, these organizations that I've mentioned have uh, continued to, to express concern about it. Uh, they've described the importance of the current contracting flexibilities with third party higher education providers and they've expressed support uh, in preserving the 2011, gui uh, 2011 guidance. And so uh, has the department conducted an analysis uh, of the impact uh, or any changes to this guidance and what that, those changes might have on minorities and underserving populations? Yes, thank you for that. Uh, we recognize that there many different perspectives on this and we want to make sure we're very thoughtful in considering the different perspectives, the different scenarios. As I said earlier, while I recognize that uh, in many cases uh, students are welcoming 
online opportunities, we also have to make sure that the oversight is, is there so that students are getting a good bang for their buck um, and a good uh, return on investment for their education. So we're in that process and we welcome feedback and, and comments from different perspectives and we'll definitely take them into account. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, and thank you for your great work. Madam Chair, I yield back. Thank you.